we're really excited and uh uh i've known i've known larry and sophia for quite a while and have been f fans for a fan for even longer and uh you know i just think that i think that they're fantastic people and fantastic filmmakers and and i think this is a fantastic film and uh Thanks. And you see, we we uh, you know we decided to make your film the uh, the 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 motto of our I mean the uh, logo of our festival this year. So oh yeah, that, worked <laughs> out. that totally um, worked out. What, uh, what, just, just is that not day. always? Is that a new? Uh, is that a new symbol? Yeah, yeah, it's different every year. It's like a different animal every year, and this year it's cool. it's a bear. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So you're our, uh, you're the, your, your film is the mascot of the festival in more, more ways than one. Um, so um, Larry, you and I, you know, talked at length at Sundance about the film, and I'm sure we're going to cover some of the same ground here, but I'm sure, th you know, not all the audience is going to be the same. So that doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, Cause our talk was so good. You said so many great things, so many interesting things that uh, I, I don't mind covering some of the same ground here. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, so let's start out talking about, well, uh, you have, uh, you have just received, uh, uh, we're, we're taping beforehand, but in, in the time that everybody's going to be seeing this, you will have just received, uh, this award from, from Portland Film Festival, you and Sophia for, uh, for, for being the, the representing part of the future of indie film being uh you know a uh, few future indie film legends of note um i kind of think you're already current indie film legends but you know uh <laughs> cool. um, why don't we talk a little bit about like how you know you don't feel like a legend <laughs> when you wake up in the morning i don't um why don't we talk a little bit about sort of your your roots in the your roots in the indie film world and like like I, I know y'all from your stuff with Joe going forward, but but tell me about sort of how you, uh, you know, what inspired you to get into this crazy world and, and how that happened. This crazy world of indie film. Well, you know, I always, I think, <clears throat> I think one of the first, uh, one of the first experiences I had with, um, wanting to become a filmmaker. And in some ways I, I equate indie film and personal filmmaking or, or tour driven filmmaking or whatever. Um, I remember I was really young. I was, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something. My father showed me Annie Hall. And at the beginning of the movie, um, Woody Allen is just addressing the camera to tell a story about his life. And I realize he's a controversial figure and everything, but this isn't really about that. It's just about my experience as a 12 year old. And I, I kind of made the uh, connection that people make movies, oh. you know, that they, because he is just talking and he's in the movie. He's also the director and the writer. He's just kind of talking to the camera about his life. And it's sort of, <clears throat> that's where I got the idea that like, actual people make movies. They don't arrive by magic uh, in front of you because they always felt like magic to me before that. Um, and so I thought, oh, if people do these, make these things that I love so much, maybe I, I, can, I can try and make them. So uh, I don't know why, but pretty much from that second on, I, was, I, I started to write scripts and make films, just so a light bulb went off in my head you know, and making them with a camcorder and things like that. And um, it was always, I didn't think of it as independent. It was always just, I got a camera and made films. Um, when I got older, I realized that other people did it too. Um, but I was un unaware of the larger kind of burge uh, the burgeoning or nascent current of what later became mumblecore but is really just low budget independent american filmmaking and um i kind of was inspired by lars von trier and the whole dogma movement early on and i made a film in those years right after i got out of college or, well maybe four or five years after i got out of college um 
on the new DV technology, um, inspired by, by, I guess, John Cassavetes and, the, and Lars von Trier and the dogma movement. Um, and it wasn't until after that movie came out that I learned about filmmakers like Andrew Bujowski and uh, Joe Swanberg and the Safdie brothers, Rai Russo Young, you know, people like that were already, already were doing the same thing I was doing. Um, and I, then I came to meet those people at festivals. And, and um, I guess that's how I got involved with, uh, with, with Joe, for example, uh, yeah. acting in his work and Sophia acting in his work. Um, I think it would, and I should meant, probably mention the Duplass brothers too. At, at that time, you know, you know, I was making movies at the same time as all these people. And as a matter of fact, my earliest film, Matt Dentler from South by Southwest, called me to uh, invite it to play South by the same year. I think Kissing on the Mouth played there, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know enough. It, it was already premiering somewhere else. Uh, another festival i didn't know enough that i should play south by instead maybe <laughs> because i didn't know anything about i made this movie but i didn't know what to do with it or, or where to put it and i sent it to all the festivals and i turned down south by because i was already premiering somewhere else so I, I should interrupt you for one second to tell all the filmmakers watching to give a little plug we're having a panel discussion later on in the week called Film Fest World. And it's all about things you should, it's all with film festival directors. And it's all about things that you should know as a beginning filmmaker when you're starting to play film festivals. So if you don't want to make the mistake that Larry made, <laughs> you should come to that panel. Look it up on the uh, Portland Film Festival website. Um, no, that's great stuff. I, I love... I love that Annie Hall was the moment for you because, I mean, especially for someone like you who is, you know, who is who is not only a a, a great actor and a great director, but a great writer too, you know. Um, I, I keep thinking about, you know, I made this film about Richard Linklater and mm -hmm. I keep thinking about what Kevin Smith says, what he always says, uh, is that, but he says it in my movie too, is when he went to see Slacker and he came out and and he the literally the thing he said to his friend was wait that counts that counts as a movie you know? <laughs> uh, and it also reminds me of what Mark and Jay say about the 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 before trilogy which are my favorite Link Later movies they say yeah you know, yeah Rick would make a movie it would make a trilogy about two people walking around and talking to each other you know right. and, and and but but that really is you know that really does tie in to you know Woody Allen is basically about I mean uh. Annie Hall is basically about two people talking to each other. There are a few other scenes, but it's basically yeah. about two people talking and to each And all other. those films, too, that you mentioned. I mean, Kevin Smith, too, when I saw Clerks as a young person, it, it definitely, that's another level because Annie Hall has movie stars in it. It was a seminal film. It won an Academy Award, and I, I believe. Um, Clerks was just a more down-to-earth thing where you could see, like, wow, you don't have to be, you don't have to have a lot of money to make movies. Yeah. Same with Slacker. I saw those films as well. Yeah. And um, also on the high side, eight and a half, I saw. Yeah. And Hitchcock too. You could tell, I would watch Hitchcock as a kid. You could tell these were different somehow, personal. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, definitely Clerks was was something for me too. <laughs> just just and then to you see up in Joe's orbit. Go, go ahead, say that last thing. I think I talked over you. Yeah, no, Clerks and like Brothers McMullen, like all these movies that clearly were just people made, you know, made for very little money on their own or were um, galvanizing. The great, the great Ted Hope, who we, uh, I guess, right now in the moment are about to hear from in a couple of hours, but in the moment people are seeing it, we just heard from a couple of hours ago, giving the keynote speech for the for the festival about the future of Indy. Uh, Brothers McMullen, Ted Hope. Uh, uh, as as a producer or as a producer, probably some of those other movies too that I'm just not uh, not thinking of. Um, but then you know, getting swept up into Joe's orbit, you know, J with Joe, you're being invited not only to be an actor but also to be a writer, right? Because there's so much that's there's so much in the moment that's being that's being written in the moment by you as you speak it. Is that is that fair? Or am I stretching? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't have a ton of 
ton of experience with Joe. We made two movies together and um, they were made so fast that it really feels like a blip in your life. I mean, I probably spent five days working on Joe Swamper movies in my entire life, five days. Oh, but I also did easy with him. So, and that was a longer thing. That was a week. So good. So yeah, yeah, yes. You were a definitely sort of a writer. <laughs> yeah, because he um, just works from an outline. So you're kind of creating your own dialogue and it's it's pretty um, collaborative, yeah. I wish Easy had gone on for 23 more seasons. I wanted to live with all those people and see everything they did until they died. I yeah. wish it was Joe's before before trilogy that he just kept going back to. Yeah, it's a nice show. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so, and then let's, talk, since you brought it up, let's talk about meeting Sophia and talk about, you know, obviously, unless you want to, unless you just feel like talking about it, I don't want to hear like how y'all fell in love or anything, unless you want to talk about it. I really am more interested in professionally sort of falling in love professionally. I think that, mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for, I guess for people that don't know, I should say that, you know, I think that Larry and Sophia have really one of the most fascinating partner relationship professional and personal partner relationships in uh in the business not just in the indie business in the business you know because y'all are y'all are both so fucking good your movies are both so fucking good and i think generally generally when two great filmmakers come together i, I mean I, it's sad and i don't know why but generally i think one of them tends to recede and one of them tends to tends to uh, go to the forefront. And I, lo I just love how both of y'all have been so supportive of each other's work and been in each other's work and and sort of taking turns. It's like, it's my, I don't want to characterize it, but it's, it sounds, it seems almost like, okay, now it's my turn, now it's your turn. And um, I'm just a, I'm just a fan, fan of every single thing that both of you have done. Even your collaboration with the mysterious Harvey Mitkus. Um, <laughs> Uh, so what why don't you talk a little bit about it can be history it can be current it can be whatever why don't you talk about whatever is interesting to you about talking about your your professional partnership with uh with the beautiful and talented Sophia to um well I don't know that I I don't know that I would have even become a continued to make films if I hadn't met her um because I had made this like I, like I was telling you, I, I, I had made this film, um, Territory, which, uh, which played, you know, it played a bunch of festivals, not South by. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and then really nothing, nothing really happened with it. And I was still in film school, which um, kind of broke me down in a lot of ways. Uh, and I entered film school with a lot more confidence than I left it with. Um, and I met Sophia uh, toward the end of, of film school. She was, she was there as well. And, uh, and she kind of, she was an actress, you know? And I was just a floundering person with no confidence at that point. <laughs> you know, I, I had had, I, I had, I'd written a play that was, pretty successful in New York uh, right before film school. And, um, and I had a lot of confidence and I went to film school and just you got it really beaten out of me. So I was kind of a shell of a, of a, of a man. Mm. And, um, but she was um, kind of a breath of fresh air and um, she gave me a lot of confidence. She liked my work, my writing, and she wanted to, to, work with me. She wanted to act in things that I wrote. So we kind of made this pact that, you know, I would, we had this dream of the future. I would write movies for her to act in. And uh, it kind of started there. And a little bit Black Bear, the story of Black Bear comes out of the shadow side of that kind of pact we made, which is just like, um, you should put me in your movies to show me that you love me. And it's just like, you you should show me that you love me by not asking to be in my movies. <laughs> that, was, that was, that's kind of a, I feel like that's what's going on in, in part two is that, you know, this, this actress sort of 
used emotional blackmail to get her husband to put her in the film, which he didn't want to do because he thought it would hurt their relationship. And so he put her in the film, but decided to torture her, not necessarily consciously, but decided to torture her along the way to make her regret that decision. So it does kind of go back to the shadow side. What? Every director has a little bit of enjoying torturing actors in them, I think. I, th I think it's- <laughs> I don't know. As a, as, as a group, you know. Uh, um, I, you mentioned Hitchcock. Certainly Hitchcock falls into that category. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes you feel like you're, some, certainly on this film, I felt like I was torturing Aubrey at, at certain points, but I, I didn't, all I can say is she chose to be there. <laughs> and I always asked her, uh, if she could keep going, <laughs> are you okay? Can you keep going? Because you have a safe it was word? yeah, it was a difficult part to play. And I would look at her sometimes and be like, "What am I doing? This person, <laughs> you know." Even though it's happening in the movie, it just in real life it was a little different. But of course, we weren't different dynamic. We weren't romantically involved, and uh, you know, I wasn't doing it for some personal reason. I was doing it for art, but still, uh, <laughs> still. Anyway, um, so yeah, she really inspired me in those, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. She inspired me in those early days. And then, you know, as time went on, her ambitions uh, expanded to wanting to direct and write and, and kind of, you know, I, I, I think there were times where that transition was awkward for me. Yeah. Um, and I probably like, come hey, wait, I'm the director here. Is that was that kind of somewhere in the back of your mind? Sort of, or or you know, points where I felt like her career was was take was coming to the forefront and mine was getting lost. Mm. Um, you know, th things like that. Uh, it, it's it's um it's delicate. It, it is a delicate thing. So. Uh, um, I don't know, I got lost there. But but at the beginning, um, and still today, I mean, I think we really push and inspire each other. I don't, I don't, I don't think I would be doing this if it wasn't for her. I'm, I'm sure of it. I don't know what she well, would do. Just speaking as a as a consumer of films and as a fan of of both of yours, uh, I, I know it doesn't necessarily matter whether anybody else thinks that you are receding into the background if you think yourself that you're receding into the background. But if, if, it, if it's any comfort to you, for me at least, I never felt that. I always felt <laughs> like this is like dynamic super team at, that, that were both incredible and I couldn't wait for either one of you to put a film out. So That's cool. I mean, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's day to day for us because for example, you know, I've had several jobs where I'm writing movies for her to direct. Yeah, yeah. And they take a long time. They're arduous, for example, it might take me six months to write a script. And then I think to myself, what about me? What about my script for myself? You know, it's a day-to-day -day, um, decision-making process and there's money involved as well, so. Well, you know, this conversation is is actually, this thread of this conversation is indicative of something that, and I just really so appreciate about both of y'all. And I always try to be sometimes unsuccessfully, as we've seen, but I always try to be, I tr always try to be as tender around this as possible. But I just so admire with both of you, like, I think all of your films are brilliant, whether or not you know any subtext, whether or not you know that the two of you are, in, are involved, whether or not you know that Kate is a good friend of y'all's, whether, whether or not, you know, any, just on their own, they are beautiful fucking movies, right? But, you know, also speaking as someone who is right now really, I mean, I'm writing a novel that is largely autobiographical or somewhat autobiographical and I'm, and I'm really struggling with some of these issues of shit. It feels so good to get this shit down on the page, but shit, do I really want everybody to, to be reading this, you know? And, and even more so when, when there's another person involved. And, and but, but man, that's the, if you can get to the place where you're comfortable opening at least a little bit up to that, like y'all have, it create, oh, that's the, that's the zhuzh. That's the special fucking shit because it's so fucking personal and it's so um, um, visceral, you know? And, and uh, not not that any of these characters in this movies in these movies are exactly you or exactly her or exactly the dynamic, but 
Um, it's just so beautiful. And I swear I'm going to get to black beer in a second, but you know, I have to ask you a question because you know, I'm obsessed with green. And of course I know that's the, this, that Sophia directed that, but obviously it's a huge Larry and Sophia thing together, you know? Um, do, uh, do you, do, first of all, everybody watching this should track down. Where can they, where can they see green by the way? We'll, we'll, so we'll stick up, we'll stick up links where they can see all of both of your movies. Cause they're all really fantastic. <clears throat> I think it's pretty easy to see green. Well, actually it might not be right now because it's about to go on Criterion, I think in November. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So it's going to be streaming on Criterion in November. So at the very least you can see it there, but for years it's been on iTunes and uh, yeah. Amazon might be on Amazon Prime, but I think maybe it's t taken off those things to yeah. go on uh, Criterion. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. But you know, you're 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 so you're so brilliant as an actor in that movie, and and, and there's just so much like the the whether you know the subtext or not, the subtext really does I think make those performances really special. Uh, it adds a little bit of oomph to them, you know. And so, um, I'm not asking you to talk specifically about any subtext uh, in that or any other movie, but I would love to hear you talk about sort of your process and her process of of getting comfortable with the idea of yeah you know what we're gonna write about shit that's happening to us in various degrees of metaphor and we're gonna put them up for the world to see like I, I assume that came with some deliberation and some do we really want to do this kind of thing you know and don't and again don't don't feel like you have to reveal any more about you know the internals of your relationship than you need to but if there's a way you can answer that question that you feel comfortable with, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure to the extent that it's that it's um, true more than any other. Shoot, I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn off. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> uh, Her ears must be ringing. She's texting me. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know that, that that's true more about us more than any other um, person who writes sort of stuff for themselves to be in, in a way. Mm. Um, I, you know, these are everybody, I, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. There's, there's people who maybe write a movie like Spotlight or something where it's, you know, about a topical issue that, that doesn't really speak to their personal lives. I think because we write about people's personal lives and their, their issues, that it might be tempting to say we're writing about our lives. Um, but we're only writing about our lives in the sense that we can relate to what these people are feeling and, and may have been in similar situations, but certainly, certainly nothing exact. I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything autobiographical about Green in particular at all. <laughs> um, I it's think it's not it, autobiographical. It's certain, there, you can't deny there's a certain meta ness to a couple I, and their best friend writing about jealousy or acting in a movie about jealousy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Or one of their best friends. I don't want to characterize. Yeah, but I, it's interesting because I don't think that particular movie, um, I think that. Green was about Sophia's feelings of jealousy, period, because that was something that she struggled with right. um, in those years, but not with regard to Kate, to for Kate, example. Exactly. So yeah. you, you know what I mean? So like we're- I didn't mean to imply that. In green, in green, you know? Right, right. Um, I think it was just about her, her jealousy in particular. Now her jealousy with Kate and other actors, you know, um may have found its way into work in other ways but but in in green it was about her jealousy period and that was yeah that was something in our relationship you know and she was exploring it so um i guess in that regard but it wasn't um it wasn't with kate and it wasn't in that particular configuration so there was familiarity with the feelings and then we were in it you know, yeah. so it's tempting, yeah. but but Sophia would didn't play the jealous character in the movie. You know, right, she right, wrote right. the jealous character and played the other character. Played the other one, which to yeah. me makes it even more fascinating. I don't yeah. know. Uh, um, so um, so there's proximity. Yeah, there's proximity to the feelings. 
uh, and 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 stuff. But but you know, I would stop. I'd say they go way way short of simple memoir film. Sure, of course. I don't think they're even in the realm of that. Well, let's get to Black Bear. I don't mean to spend so much time talking about a film she directed. Uh, no, it's okay. You know, I, I, mean, I was it. really involved. I, I was very involved in that film. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think about that not as a, a nothing, a, nothing shading Sophia. I think about that as a Larry and Sophia film, not necessarily a Sophia film. You know, although yeah, of course, I mean, it is in some ways. I, and I mean, I don't think that I would have ever made that film. So for yeah. sure, it's hers. But I definitely helped shape it. So did Kate. Uh, that was pretty collaborative. That was a film that worked from an outline, yeah. and uh, and pretty much all of the dialogue, with the exception of two or three scenes, was was created on the spot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so and we were involved with conversations about the shape of the story, and, and yeah. I mean, when only five people make a movie. <laughs> It's a collaboration. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Talking, Every, everybody has a voice. We're talking, of course, for people who don't realize about the great Kate Lynn Scheel, S-H-E-I-L, uh, whose work you should absolutely look up as well, after you've finished seeing everything of Larry's and so <laughs> <laughs> Um, So let's talk about Black Bear, um, which which we've we've just uh, just seen, uh, opening the film festival in uh, in 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 wonderful fashion. Um, I think it's a very Portland movie. I think that uh, I think that I, I'm going to predict that people will have really loved it. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about that I don't think I asked you last time is um, I love how there are these there are two traditions of great, even specifically great indie films. One of which is um, let's show all the ins and outs and weirdness of what happens at making a movie right mm -hmm. and one of which is uh let's get a let's put a bunch of young pretty people in a cabin in the woods and a bunch of freaky shit starts to happen and i like how you mashed up these two <laughs> these two uh established uh sort of tracks into one track which i've never seen done before uh and i don't know why it has ever been done before it's kind of a kind of an inspired pairing uh, were you conscious of that when you were writing, or did that just did it sort of, just sort of come out that way? I was conscious of it. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was conscious of it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't. Uh, it wasn't foremost in my mind. Uh, what was really driving the story was the emotional situations um, of the characters. Uh, but I was definitely aware that it would be cute to do two movies placed side by side that had a certain tradition behind them and, and yeah. mess around with those traditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. That's awesome. And um, talk to me about, uh, uh, talk to me about the process of, of bringing Aubrey in. Y'all already knew each other. Yeah. Um, and so, so tell me about how y'all knew each other, how long you'd known each other and tell me about approaching her about the, about the thing. Um, I, I knew her and then we got a little bit closer on the set of Easy. Um, we, we, um, we had a pretty decent amount of downtime, um, you know, just like waiting for the cameras to roll and stuff. Got to know each other a little better. And, um, and I got to see behind the scenes how dedicated and serious she was about her work. Um, and I thought that was... I thought it was really cool. And um, she just seemed like someone I would want to work with. So um, in the conversations we had, she has a partner that she, a uh, romantic partner that she works with. Um, Who's and, also a brilliant director. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, I don't know. And I just, I, I think those conversations sort of inspired me. And then um, I wrote the part with her in mind and, and showed it to her. Uh, and she wanted to do it after some deliberation, <laughs> um, you know, uh, so, so, uh, yeah, so it was written for her and, and I had her actual person and her persona in mind when I was writing it. Yeah. Yeah. She's somebody who really brings, uh, 
she's she's someone who really i'm not trying to say she's the same in every role that is the furthest thing from what i'm saying but she's definitely someone that brings a very specific presence to start with in building the character you know and so uh i can imagine that um it would be a, a pretty pretty interesting thing to to start with that and see then see where you could take it you know yeah i mean she's really unique uh really unique but i thought um it'd be interesting to go a little bit underneath the persona and explore the relationship between the more vulnerable parts of her personality yes yes, and yes. the public presentation yes uh, so i was playing with that a little hundred percent hundred percent i remember us talking about that at sundance and and uh yeah i think i think it's really i mean that's a sign of what an what a what a smart director you are honestly a uh, smart writer and director um and then let's talk about you know without well i guess we can give things away about the movie people already seen it at this point yeah. but, uh it's you know it's it, it's a it's a film that for most of the film is you know the the, the tension is turned up you know, it varies between nine and 10 uh, into how much it's turned up over certainly the last half of the movie, really a lot of the movie. Um, I have uh, I have heard before that um, that the set, when you're filming that kind of movie, tends to be actually less tense and more loving and more supportive and more everything else because you're so in that space when you're filming that you need to snap back into like jokes and affection and all that when you're not in the middle of it. Did you find that to be true in this or, or, or like what, what was, what was the atmosphere of like filming something so tense is maybe the open ended way I should ask. I, I don't, I don't know what it was like for, for every, for everybody. I think, um, I think, First of all, it was very difficult hours. Um, it was, we had 19 days to make the movie. All of our, almost all of our, our shoot days were nights, mm -hmm. um, which creates a very strange atmosphere. Yes. And I found that the body doesn't really ever acclimate to, to, to it, or at least it didn't in the three weeks that I was in Long Lake. Um, like it didn't get easier for me to stay up all night. It just get hard, got harder and harder. So it was sort of grueling, but I think, I think that being said, and for me, it was a very, very different experience than everybody else because it was, I mean, all I ever thought about was time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I thought about the performances um, when I was in front of the camera. And I thought about how we were going to shoot it all before we got going. Uh, I would wake up in the house and work with the cinematographer who also lived in that house while we were shooting. Um, and, and that was all I could think about uh, was <laughs> getting everything done in the amount of time. So I was really stressed out for the entire yeah. shoot. Um, so I didn't have one stitch of fun, but I think, <laughs> I think the others did when they weren't brutally working so hard. I mean, there were some especially wild parties uh, that I was too too tired really to get too involved in. But uh, but yeah, so there were some yeah there were some pretty wild parties. <laughs> I wasn't really like I said I was kind of not involved. I had too much going on. Well, speaking of which, were you able to have a, a stitch of fun at Sundance where you premiered to great acclaim? How was that experience? Not that you haven't been there before. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe next time I'll enjoy it more. I, 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 was, I was really nervous and uh, I was pretty scared about how the movie would be received if people would, would like it. Um, when I wrote it, I made a really concerted effort to do something uh, spontaneous, daring. I was kind of, I kind of dared myself to write this movie. You know, I've been doing much more con conventional work for money for the last five years. And I was, I was just feeling like it was getting kind of old and I had enough money to, to, to give myself about a year, you know, to, to write something where I'd not have to worry about it. 
if it was going to get produced or what. So this was like really written for me. And I thought, hey, if Aubrey wants to do it, maybe we can make it. And if she doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> Go out to someone else. But is anyone going to do this crazy thing? You know? Um, so, but luckily she wanted to do it. And then luckily someone wanted to give me money. So the whole time I was just like, this is crazy. I can't believe someone's giving me money for this. I can't believe she's doing this. I can't believe it got into Sundance. At some point, <laughs> someone's going to pull the rug out from under me and be like, nah. Sold. Tell us who, who you're just weird and with. crazy. And we don't like it. So, so I was Tell really us. worried. You know, I was really nervous. Who distributor is? And do we know? Do we have a release date yet? Do we know what plans are? Can you say? Yeah, the dis distributor is Momentum Pictures. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they're called pictures. I don't know. Momentum. And uh, it's coming out December 4th. It's supposed to come out in theaters. It was supposed to come out in a lot of theaters. I, I, I thought it was a lot, maybe 28 or maybe it was 50, I don't know. But it was supposed to have some sort of theatrical release. I think it's down to 10 now. It's a heartwarming uh -huh. family Christmas experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that we know uh, who the president is by December 4th. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> well, uh, is there anything either about the movie or about your career that uh, they we didn't cover that you would like to talk about that I missed? No, haven't I said too much already? I mean, <laughs> isn't everybody bored? It's, it's like Evita. Have I said too much? There's nothing more I can think <laughs> say to you <laughs> well um, but it's a pleasure to get a chance to talk about this and take a little trip down memory lane too absolutely absolutely well y'all have really y'all have really kicked off the festival in just the way that it should be kicked off it's just such such a fun movie such a portland movie such a meaty movie uh love being able to present you with this award hold up your your fake award that you don't have what's the award what's the, what's the uh, what's we don't know yet we, we still gotta figure that out yeah. <laughs> You know, just get something in the mail. At Thank some you point. so much for my unspecified <laughs> award. Actually, I haven't gotten many. And uh, if I'm if I decide to leave the country, uh, you know, there was a civil war or something. I can uh, <laughs> I can go to I can go to Britain. I think on you can prove that you're an award. I'm an artist. I won an award. <laughs> it's a major award. All right. Well. Larry, thank you so much for joining us, being so generous with your time and for giving us this great movie. And thank you to Sophia in absentia as well. And uh, I personally, and we all at the Port Portland Film Festival just love both of you and uh, look forward to, uh, to play in your next film. Thanks, Michael. I really appreciate it. Thanks for, right. and thanks Portland. I, I love the city. I've been there once and I, 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 want, I maybe wanted to move there. Nice. Nice. It seemed, well, it seemed amazing. I loved it. Well, uh, it's not quite. It's not quite the phrase next year in Jerusalem, but next year in person. Oh, but shout out to my friend Zach Weintraub. Do you know Zach? Are you in know. Portland? No, 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 no. I live in Atlanta. Oh, Zach Weintraub, great filmmaker, who lives. All right, Zach Weintraub. We love you too. Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer summer. Right. Check it out. <laughs> Will do. Will do. All right. Talk to you soon, brother. Thanks.